Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community and podcast connecting people with the products, lessons, and strategies to help push their business forward. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me as always is my good buddy and co-host Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going today, Matt? It is going pretty well. How's it going with you, Kyle? I feel like I never ask. You don't ever ask. I've been waiting. This is like, I don't know how many episodes, but I think this is the first time you've asked me. And now I know you care. I do. I always have, but uh, now, I'm, uh, now I'm vocalizing it. So how are you, Kyle? I'm, I'm fine, I guess. I really, I don't even know how to answer the question. So I was ill prepared for that. You took me <laughs> by surprise. All right. Well, uh, anywho. Yeah, we, well, here we go. Uh, have had a sick kid yesterday mm. took him to the doctor they made him get covid tested she was not happy no she's also not positive so that's good uh but yeah that's not fun no, that's not a stressful waiting for results moment yeah especially for uh for somebody so young too it's like not like fully aware of like what's going on like why are we doing this like yeah, yeah. yeah she was not happy about it hospital's rough yep so uh, let's get on with this week's episode. We both uh, brought a topic. Neither one of us know what the other one's going to talk about. And today you are going first. So uh, what's on your mind today, Matt? It is my time first this time. Um, so I I don't know like really like how well this is going to translate into a conversation, but this is something that perfect, I've been doing. Perfect for a podcast. I know, right? But <laughs> really, it's something that I've been doing um, more frequently on uh, on releasing or launching a new website for uh, for clients. See, I, I think I've mentioned it previously that this year I've worked a lot more with uh, with nonprofits, and along with nonprofits comes typically. Um, more hands or more more chefs in the uh, the kitchen type of type of thing, yeah. where we're we're dealing with committees and everybody has input and there's multiple people on teams um, and depending on how it's structured that can be a great thing or that can be a little bit of a hindrance. Um, in my in th- in this case this year it's been pretty okay. Um, a lot of the people they have their their set tasks and they do them and they're awesome. But there's so many different people and when these sites launch like there's going to be the social media folks there's going to be the people that are going to be you know updating the copy on the page there's going to be some people that are going to be posting blogs maybe multiple people from you know different aspects of that organization um so what i've started doing is doing a zoom call with uh with the whole group of people um and just running through, like logging in, this is the back end, and I'll log in using their, uh, their login credentials as like editors or, or whatnot, rather than the admin, which has so many more options, you know, it's, right. it's confusing to some. Um, but in doing this, like I've had, I think like the, the biggest group was, uh, was actually the most recently launched site. And that uh, I think I had four four people on the stream, not including myself, so five, um, all with different things that they're going to be tackling. But I've always been in the mind that if other people in your organization like kind of know what it's like to do your job, um, communication is usually better. Um, sure. So yeah, I've been doing this, and I've found that that really it helps a lot more. They're able to ask questions live. It's better than sending like a PDF that, you know, that has like, here's, here's a tutorial or sending a link or even, even a pre-recorded video, which I do want to start doing, um, just, you know, so it's easy for them to, to look back on. Um, I still haven't really quite figured out how to do a, like a, a tutorial video that's, that's like good enough to, to learn from, but also isn't like hyper specific to that particular website. Cause some have custom post types, some don't, some have that, you know, and it's, that's a little bit difficult, but doing it live, you can go through the whole process, um, from login to creating a new post, this, that, and the other thing. And with everybody there, I kind of feel like it, it's good for customer retention because, you know, it puts a face to the name. A lot of times, like maybe just the director knows who I am and like what I look right. like and what my personality is. But this kind of allows me to introduce myself to the whole team. Um, and I've found that since doing this, like I do, I do have a lot more emails from these folks because they feel a little bit more confident if they have like a, a simple question that 
maybe otherwise if they hadn't have actually like virtually met me um they might be too embarrassed to ask or something along those lines um it's just it's really helped strengthen the uh the relationship that i have with my clients and the people on their team so as far as rec- as being able to send them something recorded why not just record the live call y'all do and just give them a copy like follow up after the meeting's over and just say hey uh you know like i told you i recorded our meeting so you can go back and rewatch this at any time you want uh, you know, here, here's a copy of it. So that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, but I'd like to do something that's a little bit more like, um, like finite as far as I need to know how to post a, a new blog, like, and just have that one snippet because usually these, these like overarching meetings go a bit long and sure. like sending that, like, yeah, they'll get like all of that information, but they have to scrub through the video. They have to try to find it. So I'd like to find like a, a way to do like a, a library of sorts of just like those one, like really focused videos on this is how you do this. This is how you do that. Um, but in the meantime, like sending the the recording of, of the zoom call definitely helps. Well, there's that video user manuals, mm-hmm. uh, which teaches people how to do just about everything on the back end. But like you said, it's not going to be super personalized. They're not going to be looking at the back end of their own website. Right. So, if that's important to you, that, that makes it different. And I mean, it's hard if you're going to try to do that for every single project, like, man, that's going to be quite the undertaking to record all those videos and cut them down and upload them and send, you know, like there's a lot of freaking work if, if you got to do it on every project, you know, but if I build them out, like, uh, like blocks almost where, you know, if I do one on custom post types and and the, the custom fields that, that, you know, like, that you would use to, to input the information. Like that's one, like something as simple as logging in and you know, all that stuff. Like if I had those different blocks, then if I built a site that had the custom post types, then I could just link just that one, you know? And as I, I, mm -hmm. if, if I were you, if you're going to go that route where you're not showing them their ex their actual dashboard, I would definitely go video user manuals where you don't have to update those videos every time WordPress changes you might spend four or five hours doing all those videos and then WordPress updates and nothing's the same anymore. Yeah. That would be super frustrating. (laughs) Wouldn't you rather just have somebody else doing that for you? Yes, indeed. Yeah. I'll definitely look into that. Yeah. I think that'd be the way to go. See, I I have so few customers that log into WordPress. I really don't like, well, if, if I know they are going to log in and work on stuff, then we'll do a meeting and kind of do a little bit of training and go over whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't, I don't really put a whole lot of thought or time into it because there's just so few of mine that actually actually do it. Now I do have one customer that, that logs in quite a bit and they send me questions pretty often, you know, so I'll usually reply to whatever that specific question is with a loom video. So mm-hmm. that just tell them, you know, keep this URL, you know, so they can go back and watch it whenever. So I guess I'm kind of creating a library for them on the fly you right. know, uh, as they have questions for things, but yeah, I just don't have, I don't have that many that log in and do anything. I mean, yesterday I had a customer, they've had their website up for, I don't know, six, seven months. They wrote me, that's the first time they've needed anything. They needed a change. They they won like the local papers best of award. Mm-hmm. They needed to change it from three years in a row to four years in a row. So they just sent me an email and said, hey, can you change it? You know. Huh. Now That's I wonder, I wonder why like. that is because a good portion, especially this year, um, a lot of my clients, like they want to, uh, to understand the back end, or at least they want to be able to swap out copy, like instead of quote bothering me or whatnot. And I mean, these, these folks are on care plans and I'll, I'll tell them like, you know, I I can do this. Like, this is definitely something that's, that's included with that care plan. But, um, yeah, no, they, they seem to, to really want to do it themselves. I kind of go back on forth if that's a good thing or not. Now, people that are like, already used to WordPress and know how it works. That's fine. But when it's just your average person, I mean, I think it's good. It empowers them. They can keep their website up, but then mm. it just causes more problems too. Cause then they're just going to screw stuff up, you know, right. that I got to go. Fix. Well, I've been using the, uh, the Elementor, like, you know, uh, user role management and just moving yeah. everything to, to just being able to, to play around with the, the copy basically. So if they want to change their messaging or, or rephrase something, that's, totally i don't even think that they can swap out images um in the way that i've got it set up so 
like they can't really break stuff. They can't see the like too much of the back end, but they still can go in and, and make those those finite changes. Or if they notice a spelling error, they can go in and, and do that because I swear every site I launch has at least one. Shh. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, but I, I think it's I think it's fine having them in the back end. Yeah. I mean, I'm not opposed to it. I just, I don't know. I guess it just depends on who your customers are. You know, I know there's Mm -hmm. a lot of people in the group. I've definitely seen it both ways where some people really try to get their customers in there doing stuff. And some, you know, I think, I think I probably position it too, in a way, like when I'm selling the project, like, listen, you'll, you'll be on a care plan. If you, if anything needs to be changed on the website, all you got to do is call me, email me, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's taken care of. Like you don't have like, so I'm kind of positioning it that way uh as you know you don't ever have to get in and do all this stuff like just email me and see it's that's done. so weird because i position it the same way like you know you've got the three 30 minute tasks you got this that if anything needs to be done i'll you know just shoot me an email and it'll most likely be done within a, a couple hours but right. um yeah but still they're like okay cool like we'll definitely take you up on that how do we do it ourselves Oh, that's good and that's cool like you know it's just um it's weird i wonder if that has anything to do with like the if it's either the the type of clients you have or if it's the like a regional thing that's a good question like if uh if new england if new englanders are more like do-it-yourselfers or something like i don't yeah. know i am kind of out in the boonies i'm not sure all my customers know the internet exists fair fair okay i get some weird questions but yeah, so interesting. So definitely uh, any feedback anybody has on uh, video user manuals or what you do to train your clients, that would be uh, interesting to hear what everybody's doing on that in the group. Uh, you can comment here live. I know we have quite a few people watching. If people want to drop comments in here, uh, we'll do our best to respond to them as we go. All right, so... Uh, yeah, it's your turn. My turn. Um, so uh, a couple, like two weeks ago, maybe now? I don't know. I've lost track of time. I feel like I've said I've lost track of time a lot. I think it's this year, man. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I had I moved all my all the websites I manage, all my personal websites and all that from normal vulture servers on Cloudways to Vulture high frequency servers. And so I made a you know a process for doing that. I moved a bunch over and I goofed on one. I posted about this in the group. Uh, I goofed on one and deleted my customer's website without um, realizing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, luckily, I had an updrafts plus backup and was able to launch a new application in Cloudways, find that backup, restore it from there. Everything worked fine. So uh, all's well that ends well, but it really, you know, threw me into quite a bit of a panic, especially when I knew, um, come to find out, somebody told me, um, even when you destroy a server on Cloudways, they can recover it for a certain amount of time, which I didn't know at the time. I didn't figure they could. Uh, but anyways, um, it made me super nervous that my only backup solution was updrafts plus, which I just have a free account for mm-hmm. um, because there's been several times I've needed to restore from those backups and it's failed. Right. Um, now I don't have to do it that often. So it's not like I have a huge sample size of data to say it, you know, half the time it doesn't work. I don't know. Sometimes when I've tried it, it doesn't work. Uh, and knowing that at that time, I thought that was my only course of action was to get this backup. Um, it, it happened to work that time and that was good. Uh, but it definitely started to, you know, to freak me out a little bit. I have the backups that Cloudways does in the server, which is typically the first thing I go to because mm-hmm. it's pretty simple to deploy one of those backups. But when that server uh, so is uh, t- destroyed. Yeah, yeah, but not if you destroy it. Uh, so that's usually my first place to go. And then after that, I'll go to updrafts. So I started thinking, okay, I probably need a better solution for this. Um, so I started looking through what everybody was doing and what people have suggested. You know, it's been talked about in the group a lot. And one thing a ton of people have been talking about, and we have the people who run the company in our group uh, and lots of recommendations from people I trust is looking into Blog Vault. And so um, I've looked at it several times in the past, uh, but to be 100% honest, and this is something I shared with them, um, their marketing and pricing and all that confused the hell out of me. I didn't mm. understand really. They have several different brands that do several different, they have the right. blog vault and Malcare and, and all these different things. Uh, but you can buy plans that include all of them, but it's to me, it's not laid out for that to make a whole lot of sense. Um, 
So I started looking at it a little bit more and did a trial run. They have a 14 day trial. Um, so I did a trial run um, and I ended up uh, yesterday morning signing up for their agency license for up to 50 sites. Uh, Cause I think I have 47 or something in my server now. So I'll probably have to move it up again mm -hmm. uh, before long. Um, but then got all those set up. So I just want to talk about that process a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to pull up this page here. So up to 50 sites. Uh, so $149 a month, um, but it's going to take care of, um, you can have staging sites, but I really like the way Cloudways does that. So it's probably not something I'll use a whole lot. Uh, it does daily backups and will store backups for 90 days. So that's 90 backups for each site. I'm keeping daily backups on most sites, but not keeping nearly 90 of them. Right. So that's definitely uh, an increase. So it's automatically doing all the backups. Um, I use their their Cloudways. The Cloudways migration plugin is just rebranded from them. It's their plugin. Uh, so that's all included in there. Uh, you can have the 10 staging sites. Um, for security, it does malware scans, uh, automatic malware removal, uh, and does a firewall. So you can view all those logs and everything on there, which I've been, you know, it's only been a day. So I've I've kept an eye on it, but it definitely looks like it's stopping things that are trying to get in. Right. And then uh, you can update all your plugins and stuff like I've been doing in, in main WP. So um, I connected all my sites, which was super easy. Uh, I went in here, pressed add site, type in the site URL, type in my username, password. It automatically installs the plugin, syncs everything, does a backup, scans everything. All that happens in the back end. Uh, I did notice because I was doing these back to back to back to back to back on all of my sites, uh, I crashed a couple servers. I just maxed out the CPU on them, mm -hmm. uh, probably because I was backing up and scanning all those websites at one time, right. which is probably just me more than anything. Um, but yeah, so adding them all was easy. It, it did all that. It was done, you know, in a couple hours I had finished the 40 something sites I put on there. Um, I checked this morning. It had done all of its backups again. Um, it does some uptime monitoring, which, you know, I, I have uptime robots set up, um, which is not always super uh, reliable, but uh, so I'll see how, how much different that is with blog vault. Um, it does some um, performance testing, which it shows a little beta badge next to it, but it will show the, um, the loading time of all the sites. Um, and then it, it gives you a list of all your sites with loading time from worst to best. Now, okay. I don't know where, it, you know, what system they're using for this. I'm seeing a whole lot different numbers depending on which tool I use uh, to test the speed of a site. So it doesn't line up with everything else I've seen, but it's in there. Uh, the other thing is uh, they have built in reporting set up. So I could... Um, I could set up reporting. I'm not going to. Um, I looked at the reporting in here briefly, and to me, it was fairly not pretty, uh, would be my kind way of saying it. Um, so I, I don't send out reports to my clients on backups and plugin updates and stuff anyways. Um, but yeah, blog so about that. I like uh, what, what really sold me was, okay, now I'm paying for a backup solution. Uh, everybody said that, you know, everywhere I could find them being talked about is their backups uh, work really well. Um, the security stuff, obviously I'm not, I've talked about this before. I'm not a security expert. So, uh, you know, it, I, I'm sure this will help. Um, and they have a good reputation for that as well. As far as being able to update all of my sites, like I said, I'm using, I've been using main WP for years now. Uh, I don't love nor hate main WP. I know I don't use it to its fullest extent. I log in and update plugins on it. Basically mm -hmm. uh, I have noticed here. It seems like in blog vault, it takes longer to uh, go fetch all the, do all the sync with all my sites to see what needs to be updated. I feel like that takes longer in blog vault. Um, and it doesn't seem like you have nearly the amount of options, like to be able to go and maybe it is here. And I just don't know. I got a meeting with them later this week to uh, like, ask a bunch of questions and demo and stuff. Um, but to be able to like bulk, you know, deactivate or activate or um, 
put some certain plugins on um, automatic updates or some of those things that I was doing in main WP. It doesn't seem like it has quite all of that built into it, mm -hmm. um, but I'm definitely going to give this a shot for at least a couple months and, and see how I feel about it. But I do already feel a little bit of relief, like 150 bucks isn't chump change, but uh, if I have to be less worried about destroying a site that's probably worth the peace of mind right totally and i mean for that price too if you've got that many clients on care plans you know i mean right. that that really it just balances out and yeah so it's about three dollars per website yeah that's per month that's really not bad especially for the peace of mind that you get right so uh i didn't i guess this this will give you a bit of uh, insight into my confidence here. I didn't get rid of main WP. I still have it all synced up with all my sites. I didn't disconnect any of that. Um, so it's still there just in case this doesn't work out. I didn't want to go back and redo all that again. Yeah, no, uh, no but, it's best yeah, to would, keep it while you're testing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought about it and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to have to do all that again, but yeah. So I've, I, you know, Christina's talked about blog vault quite a bit. Uh, Christina Romero, uh, I definitely trust her opinion. There's quite a few people in the group who've talked uh, highly about it. So I'm excited to jump in here and, and see what it's like. But, and it kind of makes you question like, what is peace of mind worth? A lot, like a lot, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it also gave me the opportunity yesterday. I, I reached out to all my care plan clients and told them like, you know, that I had invested in some new tools that we're going to, you know, do more frequent backups and keep more of them and going to do malware scans and this and that. So I was able to send all like all my care plan customers a like a touch point email and just let them know that I've bundled more things into their care plan, mm -hmm. uh, which is always a nice email to be able to send out. So, yeah, always. Um, what type of, I mean, this is kind of off topic, but like what type of uh, like touch point emails do you typically send? Yeah. So any excuse I can come up with to send one is usually good. I try to do it at least once a month, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, some of it will just be random, like one-off basis to a specific customer. I hear about something in their industry or I notice something on their site or whatever it may be. I'll send them a, send them an email, uh, something like this, where I've, I've done some kind of update. Um, I've sent them stuff on, um, we, you know, when all this COVID stuff happened, there was like a ton of spam coming through all of our contact forms. So I sent them some information on all that. I mean, whatever I can kind of come up with as an idea to, to give them some kind of information, I will. I know uh, we had somebody share a post or a video they did the other day where they're creating like um, wish lists for, with, for their clients for their website. So that it's something that they can go over with them pretty often, which I think is a nice touch point to say, that's, yeah, you know, that's a nifty uh, idea. Here, here's something we could be working on on your site. I thought of these things. Um, he's using Docket WP to do that, by the way, which is nice. Uh, a good use case scenario. Uh, but yeah, so you know, anything I can think of to kind of just stay in 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 their mind. I just don't like reporting emails because they're boring, and I well, wouldn't not, read them. Yeah, they're so impersonal that like it's just like robotic. Like, hey, I did this for you. Like. Nobody really wants that. Like it's it's good information, sure, but like you said, if you're able to write an email that's like a little bit more heartfelt, like, hey, this is what I'm doing for you, like that tone like really helps strengthen that that relationship. Yeah, I kinda I kinda feel like the reporting email for me, I don't think this is like this for everybody, but for me it's like me sending proof I'm doing my job. Right. Like <sighs> I'm doing the job. Okay. Your website's up. Everything's working fine. No news is good news on that. Um, like if you need a list of every step I took, then you probably just need to hire an employee. Uh, Cause that's not really what I do. Um, but I, I know it's not that way for everybody. Yeah, that's true. Huh. So that's what I got. I do have one other thing that's off topic, but I do want to share with you before we wrap this up. Um, I usually ask you if there's anything we missed. Is there anything we missed that you wanted to cover? And then you can return the favor and volley it back to me. <laughs> well, it's the kind of the theme of today's episode. So yeah, no, I mean, I think I've, I've covered what I want to. So Kyle, what else do you want to say? <laughs> awesome. I'm so glad you asked. Thank you for asking. That. You're very welcome. Uh, I wanted to, uh, to brag a little bit. Uh, this is self promo -y, but it's got a nice little tie-in. Uh, but um, Andre has been working on 
an update for Docket, our first kind of big update after we've launched, uh, something that I know uh, a lot of people have been requesting. So I had a cool way to bring this into this uh, conversation. I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, this is the back end of the admin bars website. Um, here in Docket, I've created this list called Podcast Episode Checklist. And I've made this for us to remember all the things we need to do when we publish a, uh, a podcast episode. So a title, description, links, upload the audio, you know, link to the YouTube video, whatever all those steps are. Uh, remember to check it on the front end to make sure it looks right. Mm -hmm. uh, clear cache, submit to search console, share a post about it in the group. So, you know, we would just uh, check through these things as we do them, right? Mm -hmm. But what we've, uh, we've just sent out a email to everybody who's a current customer that they can beta test this right now is this option to add a collaborator. So this is actually going to search inside of um, our WordPress install for all the users. And you can search for any user. Uh, the admin bars website has thousands of users because of the WOM. Um, but I found Matt's user here right now. So if I click on that, I have now shared this list with Matt. Uh, so when Matt, when you log into the back end of the website today to, uh, to upload this podcast, even though you don't have a Docket account, you will see this Docket button in the top right corner. And when you click on it, you'll be able to view just that list. You won't have full permissions for everything because you're not a full uh, user of the, uh, the software, mm -hmm. but you will have access to this one list that I shared with you, uh, which is going to be a pretty cool way for people to be able to... Uh, collaborate with their clients, collaborate with subcontractors, collaborate with their podcast host, whatever it may be. Uh, but yeah, so I'm excited that that's definitely something this plugin needed and we've been excited about. So uh, we just got a zip file with the beta version this morning. So I wanted to brag about it because it's fun. No, I like that a lot. And it actually does tie in pretty well to uh, a previous conversation today. Um, so when when you add me, do I get a like a notification or... At this point, you do not. So we, we have some things kind of on the way. All this is kind of like building blocks, right? So mm -hmm. we're trying to kind of iterate as we go instead of uh, trying to build a final product and then realizing all the steps we should have took in between. So right. it's kind of a step at a time type thing. So right now, uh, when you log in, that button will be in the top right-hand corner. Uh, what Andre built was like a single sign-on system. So typically for anybody who's a Docket user, you log into WordPress, then you click Docket and you have to log into your Docket account because it's separate from WordPress because we're not storing all this stuff in the WordPress database. Uh, but for the collaborators, we didn't want people to have to give their clients a separate login to log into, right? right. Uh, so what he built was a single sign-on system. So when they log into WordPress, if there's a list shared with them on that website, it will automatically log them into Docket where they can view that list. So we, we stripped down all the features uh, on the collaborators end so they can't create new lists. They can't go into your personal library. They can't delete lists or anything like that because obviously you don't don't want clients going all through your account, uh, but they can uh, mark off items, add items to the list you share with them and, and stuff like that. So, Which for a collaborator, like, like, I mean, especially just starting out seems absolutely plenty for, for what they're doing with it. Right, right. Because we've had several people that are using it uh, with clients, but the only way they were able to do that um, until this beta release comes out, uh, or when this, this full version release comes out, the only way they were able to do that is to share their, their docket login. And then that gives them access, your client access to everything in your account. So we really needed a solution that was, uh, more well served for this. So, you know, same thing with your, with your clients, you were talking about, um, videos and training them. Um, you could even create a list with Docket and then share yeah. it with them. And that list could be the steps they need to take to publish a blog post or this and that. Of course, in all the tasks, you can link to videos and all of that. So they could go go out and link to, to videos or whatever and have it right there. So hopefully it'll be a nice tool for you to be able to collaborate with clients on stuff like that as well. Yeah, and considering it's all right there on the, the, the dashboard rather than you know a client four months down the road that watched the tutorial and, you know, thought that they grasped it and probably did at the time, but hasn't touched the site in four months, all of that, you know, escapes their, their brain, you know, otherwise they'd have to like, what, search through all of their emails and, and try right. to find it. And like, yeah, that's, a, that's a pain. So having it just right there, that's awesome. 
There you go. So brand new uh, quality of life update. We, we emailed everybody who's a customer and asked them if they wanted to beta test it. This is the first like real big, uh, we're going to have to do a bunch of queries into the WordPress database to check for users and all that. So we need to test this on a bunch of different staging environments or uh, hosting environments and things like that to make sure it's uh, solid for everybody. But it's all, uh, all the collaborators are included in the plan. So you can add collaborators to your projects if you have a Docket account. Um, and yeah, that's it. So there's my self promo for the day. Awesome. It tied in well. I don't know. It's, it's promo, but it works. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, right? Heck yeah. All right, man. Well, let's, uh, let's wrap this up. If the group or this show helps you in any way, the best way to help us is to like and subscribe to our channel, to share our content and to use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes a little time and it greatly helps support the show. We will catch you all on the next one. Bye-bye. See you.